Hello everybody and welcome to today's demonstration on Salesforce based routing. Uh, before we make a start, um, uh, what I'd like to do is just take you through a couple of screens just to set the scene. Uh, we're looking in, we're looking at, at uh, Sales, we're looking at Salesforce Lightning uh, and at the user homepage of the Natabox um, Salesforce uh, PBX. Um, we can see my my phone numbers. I've got a, a mobile number here. Uh, I've my extension is visible. Um, I've I've got information about all of the groups that I belong to, which can then be applied to call queues. And I can also see some information about the calls I've made, my recent calls. And over here on the bottom left hand side of the screen, I can see all the voicemails that have been left for me. And I can indeed pick these voicemails up from within Salesforce. On the bottom left hand corner, we have the, the Natabox CTI and also web phone. Uh, the web phone, I can just get that going with one click. And so long as this uh, window is open, I can make and receive phone calls using the web phone from within Salesforce. So no, no software, no hardware. Okay, so as I mentioned, today we're going to be talking about Salesforce-based routing. The first thing I'm going to do is um, we're going to make some calls, uh, create some records on an inbound call, show you some dynamic routing, and then, then what we're going to do is we're going to include uh, another route, another route, Salesforce-based routing uh, for uh, account information. Okay, so to show you that there are no um, smoke and mirrors here, and that I haven't previously created a contact record with um, the phone number of this phone on it, I'm just going to reveal the phone number, and we can see here that it's um, it's uh, six one four two eight four nine nine four three three. Let's just go ahead and search for that number. So apart from a couple of uh, call log records, which um, do contain this phone number from previous um, demonstrations, there are no lead or contact or account records um, in the system that contain this phone number. Okay, so let's just go ahead and make a call. So just go ahead and press one. And I can just go ahead and answer that call. And we'll notice that there's a, uh, a new contact's been created. I can just go ahead and, and uh, use screen pop to, to fetch that record. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to just give this record a name. Let's say that the call came in from Henry. And then I can wrap up the call. And so we've created a new account and we're done. If I come over here to my screen and just do a refresh on the record, we can see that we've got a new activity has been created called New Account Created. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to just go to uh, my general contacts page. I'm going to have Henry uh, call back in and we'll show you screen pop once again. Okay, so um, 
So what's happened here is we're using a combination of dynamic call routing and also text-to-speech to, let me just hang that up to save on feedback, and also text-to-speech to, um, to do some dynamic routing and personalization of the call. So I'm on a completely different screen now. Like before, I can just click the uh, link to Henry's record. And we can say that we've uh, wrapped that call up using one of our wrap, customizable wrap codes and, uh, and we're done. Okay, again, if I just um, refresh the screen. And we can see that we've got uh, a new wrap up code or a new activity history record uh, appointment booked. Okay, so let's um, let's take a, a dive behind the scenes and just show you some of the policy that, that that's, that's uh, been behind the the short demonstration that we've had. And then what we're going to do is we're going to introduce a new rule to route the call based on the account status. Okay, so we'll just head over to routing policies. We'll pick up our Salesforce based routing policy here. And um, we'll just take you through the, the demo that we've just had. So the first time Henry called in on one of these numbers, the first thing we did was we, we did a Salesforce query. We're looking at the, the, uh, the contact object and uh, we can then, once we've got the contact object, we can pick up all the fields within there and create a query. So we're looking in this case for the phone number in the phone field. Uh, the first time Henry called through, there was no record, so he went down this route. And we created a record using our Salesforce store object. And in this case, we said create a contact record and insert the following values into the following field. So caller, new for first name, which I changed to Henry, and then Henry's phone number. And then Henry, Henry was routed through to, to, be, to me by choosing one. Now the second time Henry called in, we got a match on his phone number. And if we get a match, then we've instructed the system, Natabox, to pull, pull back a number of field values um, from the contact record. So we can, uh, in the contact record, we can basically see all of the fields within the object. And we've pulled forward a, a bunch of uh, values, which we're going to put into our results set. Now on, on the contact record, I also have a field called account balance. And in this case, what we're going to do is we're going to create a rule based on account balance. So I'll just pull that value in. So now we're also looking for account balance and we're going to uh, uh, create a rule to route the calls based on what the account status is. Okay, so um, firstly, we'll perform a query to see whether um, we've got a match on account balance. So if we have, we're going to send the call one way and uh, if, if the account balance is current, we'll send it to the account manager. So uh, the first thing we'll do is, is, is we'll do a, um, a query on the, on the record. And we're going to do a compare. So we'll go to our user defined categories. Uh, the query is, um, does the field look at the field account balance? We'll just add that. And if it equals current, we'll send the call on its way as per normal. But if it says anything other than current, let's just say it says um, overdue, we're going to send the call a different way. So in this case, um, if, we do, if we do send the call to the accounts team, let's just uh, let the person know what's happening with their call. So do a speech component to say, dear
to your macro first name. Dear Macro, your account is overdue, therefore you will be transferred to the Accounts Department. Please hold. Okay, so what we'll do then is we'll transfer the call into a call queue and to the Accounts Department. And once, that, once that's happened, we'll, we'll just uh, conclude the call. Great, okay. So if I just go back to my contacts and pick up Henry's record, we've got a field called account balance. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the value to current. So when Henry calls back in on a current account, his, uh, his call will be routed to his account manager. Okay, so Henry's call's coming back to me. However, if I change the value to overdue, And uh, Henry's been put into the uh, call queue for the accounts department. We can also uh, uh, whisper to the accounts department, to the agent who accepts the call, saying that uh, Henry's called for his account manager, but his call's been put through uh, because his account is overdue. The, uh, the, the uh, accounts person can use the same click to dial, uh, sorry, the, the same screen pop um, technique to, to pop Henry's record and check his account details. Uh, so there you have it. That's um, a demonstration of Natabox um, Salesforce-based routing and uh, how simple and easy it is to uh, use Natabox and um, Salesforce to create a query on Salesforce and to perform Salesforce-based routing. If you'd like to learn more about um, Natabox and Salesforce-based routing, please get in contact with us at www.natabox.com. Many thanks.